into what they call op. So that would be an option too. All right, so I'm going to turn the mic over to our mayor. 
And I hope that today in the conversation where all of the commissioners and the elected officials and faith leaders and neighborhood leaders will be there, that we will listen to one another, we will work to be heard, but we will come together in one voice, one voice that says in Dayton, hate is not a value. Thank you. So if 
what you're going to do in just a minute is uh, you're going to go ahead and head back out the way you came, and you're going to go downstairs. There are volunteers who are going to help you get there, but uh, that is, uh, we're going to wait. Everybody who does not have one of those numbers, please stay seated, and we're going to let all of those folks go ahead and move out to, uh, to their small groups, and then everyone else can go. So we'll go ahead and take a minute. Again, it's yellow and green four, and all number five. And I want to also mention, if anyone has uh, challenges with stairs, please go ahead and stay seated to you, even if you have one of those uh, one of those numbers. So we'll go ahead and let all of those folks go.
want to see unity in our community. We want to see civility in our community. And we want to see compassion for everyone in this community, black, white, no matter what your age, whatever. We want to see the civility, and I'm not saying be restored, but to show it in strength. Because I think we all have to. Okay, continuing on the question one, uh, I was with Green Two. Solutions, that's what we're here for. What the city has spent on the rally, a correct response, which is a unified response, that we're here for the youth and that we're afraid for our babies. That's one of the reasons we're here. The financial impact and how the city's response will impact the residents. And most important, I think all of them, the one that really touched me is how we answer as a city is what we say about ourselves as a city. So I'm speaking for the Green Group, number one. And uh, we, like a lot of people, have plenty of words that were tossed around, but one thing that we all seem to come back on was the word unity. So for our group, if there was one overarching term for question one, it was unity. Number one. All right, I represent the blue twos out there, and together we formulated uh, our focus to be on solidarity. We have to bring together all of our unique, uh, unique and diverse communities together as one and really show that we are big and strong. Thank you. 
And I want to make sure that everyone knows that at the 11th Pavilion on May 25th, there will be an education event to educate our youth, our dogs, anyone in life that wants to come. It's an alternative location. I'm going to share with you uh, yellow two responses. Um, what are we for? Intercultural understanding, respect of individuals, our own personal safety, unity, peace, empowerment, knowledge, education, community development, community identity, understanding tolerance, putting ourselves in someone else's shoes, um, but not be motivated necessarily to come together like this by hate. Uh, but rally behind issues that we face every day, um, and there are several of them that were that were named: our school districts, our food deserts, our blighted structures. Um, we should have groups like this together all the time, dealing with the very real issues that we have in this community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am representing Blue Wands. Let me hear you, Blue Wands. <laughs> was conversation. There's a strong commitment to initiate and being part of ongoing conversations such as this. Number two was related to relationships. There's a commitment to build and bridge new relationships in our community. Number three focused on faith, the faith to believe what is good in our community, but more importantly, to do what is good in our community, and the faith in that there is a better part to, of our community to get to know. And then the last one is listening. Being part and practicing purposeful listening to understand and to get to know one another. Thank you for sharing. So this is all part of us. We want to make sure everybody goes to her and oh, yes. well, who has another part to it? Uh, and the harvest. So, um, what's your name? Uh, if we want to take a couple. If, if, if uh, something was mentioned that you want to, that you want to, want to take a couple people, and we're gonna to move to the, the next question. So today has the the mic. If a couple people want to ask something to what's already been shared, or if not, we can just go on to the next one. Okay, um, also um, for question one, uh, first I represent um, Rep. 5. We basically talked about love, peace, diversity, uh, human kindness, understanding. Um, we need to understand each other. We need to take the time out to love each other. And we basically said that this should not be the only time that we all come together as a community or on Martin Luther King Day. It should be like this all the time. Yeah. We should love each other all the time. Yeah. That's what God told us to do. Because to love each other, love our neighbor as yourself. We need to do this more and stop the hatred, stop the evilness. Nobody asks to be the color of their skin or their race. We need to love each other more than what we're doing and stop the hate. <laughs> Basically, um, as far as the impact we want, that, um, we want the response to have, we decided that, um, we said that I am my neighbor. I am me. We all represent each other. You know, we're all brothers and sisters. One voice, one sustained, one sustainability. Uh, we need a long-term solution, and we need to live these responses. So not just speak it, but actually live it. We have to take action and become more proactive. Question two, I 
impact do you want the response to have? The group came up with to look over it, to ignore them, to shut them down, be peaceful, and either ignore them or to over-educate about them, to eventually dissolve them. Uh, the two things that we had as a summary that are uh, show of strength and will against hate, and to show that our voice is bigger and stronger than theirs. So our, our group uh, had uh, kind of two different ideas of um, inward, inwardly we'd like to keep this dialogue going, that we want to use this as a building point to be able to bring our community together. Um, outwardly we want to show that we are a city of peace and that we're a city that is together and united against hate. Um, and then also that we wouldn't mind that if the statue of Abraham Lincoln fell down on <laughs> I did mention last time that uh, I'm representing Group 3, and we had uh, a pretty diverse group, and we happened to have two police officers um, that were there when the Klan was last here in 1994. So we were able to really get into some of the meaningful things that not only happened then, but what is happening and trending now in terms of social media, um, recruitment, which is you know part of their impact that they're looking for. So what we thought of is that we thought that we would focus on not only a peaceful protest, not the police didn't say that, I, I said that part of our group, <laughs> a peaceful protest um, with being able to understand that things will be said that um, a lot of our youngsters have never heard. I can tell you, I um, the, the last one in 94, I did a rally one hour before. The N-word was used over 400 times. Um, there were groups that were brought, we weren't really necessarily concerned with the group that was on the other side of the fence that were from the crowd, it was the crowd. So we know that the impact will be meaningful to those that are outside that will espouse on some of the things because this is just a recruitment phase and we would like to see the impact be that they do not and are not able to recruit off of hatred and diversity in our community and showing them that we have and that we can think outside of the box meaning that we don't have to just stay home and, and I understand what the mayor is saying I understand what the police officers are saying I understand what our commission is saying but we also have the right to be a part of a community that shows in force that we're not afraid, we don't want to be confrontational, but at the same time, we want to show them that we love each other, white, black, everybody in this community. And in that respect, that we do that, we want to use some creative tactics of ignoring and being able to make their message ineffective to jump the people off within the crowd. Again, green to be um, brief. Uh, the question is, what impact do you want the response to have? We talked about having Dayton be a model for cities across the country on how to deal with similar situations in hate. A foundational opportunity to build relationships, recognizing uh, that our city, that we need to work together on a daily basis, which has also been said several times. And one of the other ideas was uh, being unified as a community, we speak as a group. And then a uh, great idea was to have um, either the day after or what have you, the longest table event along with entertainment and do the longest table there and we break bread together as a community. Uh, our group talked about just this single word crickets. So the idea that when they go downtown that there's nothing going on there, so it's like we've taken the oxygen out of downtown for them. Um, and then we also talked about how amazing it would be if their bright idea of coming to our community sparked off a long-lasting, um, you know, unifying thing that we just kept going as a community, so that the thing that they thought they were going to do uh, for their cause actually just pushed it in a complete other direction.
and to look at this as a way to move forward. Some of our great ideas was to re-educate youth and the adults, to find safe places, to come with compassion, to come with empathy. And if our own government can't treat us equally, it's hard for us to be encouraged in fighting all types of hate, to bring human dignity, and to surround downtown with love, not just the square. And if you can listen carefully, the people who are bringing the hate are chosen.
you and your group, we don't want you to carry on well done. More than just kind of, so I guess kind of speaking to what you're saying, like something a little more active is like the response that we wanted as well as.
Parker came up with that has, well, when we, are, we also have the long table idea and a couple others. One thing that came up was an idea of a creative installment, um, whether it's at the same event, whether it's at different events, whatever, activities that refocus, basically something that's a big, very, very creative um, event, very theatrical, possibly something that's very deliberate, but also is um, kind of a total antithesis and, and, and showing the grades that we're talking about, but doing it specifically because Dayton is such a creative city.
um, but it says that a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. And so if we are able to, you know, guide our own ocean with our own boats and just share our love, I think that we'll be doing great. Make the news broadcast a success story of us joining forces to produce greater outcomes. Um, my name is um, Alicia Pagan, I'm from Lulac, and I want to say that I am so grateful that the community has come together. I am, I am sorry that it is tragedy that often brings us together, but this is power. Um, Nonviolence is not inaction, it is not discussion, it is not for the timid or the weak. Nonviolence is hard work. If we're going to keep the dream alive, we have to stand for what peace and what dignity is. And so shun them. Don't give them voice. Shun them. And then let the community celebrate in love. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Thank you so much. Uh, our, we think that our response will be successful if um, there is education on the fact that this is, has farther reaches than just this rally um, and a larger impact for our community and they don't come back. I just have one word that we need to go in prayer, to pray that everything goes okay on that. Thank you. A successful day for May 25th is that, um, first of all, there will be no injuries to any yeah. age group. That the youth is involved and committed and educated before this day, on that day, and after. And that the success brings more conversation within all churches, homes, schools, and any um, particular setting where a group of people meet. So I want to really quickly um, share with you one comment that I forgot from a young college woman in our group. I'm not sure where you are, but she's hosting a love fest. Um, which I thought was a beautiful idea too as a counter to this particular event. And the one, um, how you know this response is successful is no one gets hurt. The comments uh, that we have, two have already been shared, but the two that weren't will help us, this event, or whatever comes out of it, will help us to begin coordinating our efforts in our community, even though we may have different opinions about that. And then the last is that Dayton is no longer among the top 15 segregated cities in the U.S. So we came up with this difference uh, to have a large, well, it's also shared, but uh, to have a large multicultural event as a separate event happening at the same time or the day after, but probably at the same time. To, to advertise their events, I think it needs to be equitable. Right, and I set the timer. That's what we all. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, we are having an event that we didn't we didn't advertise. So I mean, if we I didn't advertise an event, so I didn't think this was the place for so it. So we're having public comment at this time, which is thirty seconds. So if anybody would like to give a public comment for thirty seconds, we can entertain those at this time. If that's okay. There are multiple organizations, uh, SELC, the Black Panther Party, um, Black Lives Matter, Miami Valley area, and some other organizations, and we will be downtown, kind of protesting at 1 o'clock on Saturday. And so if you're interested in working with us, you can see me as well. Oop.
quick, quick comment um, on this gathering. I think I commend the city with the leaders, the elected officials for, for having this thing. Because at the end of the day, we look for those leaders to have a plan. And I think they do have a plan. And so I, I thank them very much for, uh, for hosting this. Hi, my name is Carmen Kirkpatrick, and um, I kind of came up with the vision of having this festival kind of similar to uh, the events that the NAACP is having, but I had this vision. Um, we have a public event on Facebook. If you check it out, Love Fest DYT. Uh, we're going to have live entertainment, food trucks. We are still seeking a venue, but we are um, collecting a very diverse group of speakers. Um, basically, it's just for love and unity and to party and celebrate that love is winning and dating. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, I just want to make sure that everybody um, knows that um, there are a lot of different groups doing different stuff in the city. So the reason that they felt they could come to our city and do this in the first place is because everybody's competing against each other. So just keep that in mind and be ready to focus on the policies that are actually letting them come to our city and we can't do anything about it and we live here. This is a very important announcement and it's in April. It's on the 28th at six o'clock at Omega Baptist Church. We hope to have a federal investigation here for Good Samaritan Hospital. If y'all can come out for this, y'all need to come out for that.
We um, thank you all for coming. If you have a form, you can give it to any of the, the folks at the table, out at the table. You can, there's a box you can drop it in or you can bring it up here to us. And um, uh, peace, good night.